Hello my friends! If you're new here, I am Jordan. In this video, we are doing like all things bookish. So I have seen other people do this like ultimate book video where they do all the bookish things and it is just one of those videos I've always wanted to do. So I thought it would be fun to finally make one of these just cozy bookish videos. I will be reading two books during this which I will get into in just a second. I have book mail here to open that I am ridiculously excited about. My Kindle hasn't had a makeover in like a year. I have some books to list on Pango. I need to update my reading journal for March. So there's just like a lot of things to do. Plus this weekend I am going book shopping and to dinner and to see a movie adaptation of a book with my mother. So it's just like the perfect time to finally make a all things book lovers type of video. First let's talk about the books that I will be reading in this vlog. I have a romance and a romanticy. Those are my top two genres. I am currently listening to Emily Henry's new book. I got a advanced audio. Thank you so much Libro FM. So I'm listening to Funny Story currently. I think that I'm about 20% in and I'm loving it so far. Her banter, her stories, like they're just so good and they always bring me so much joy. I really want to reread some of her books because I kind of plowed through them before I was really a part of this community and I want to reread them and see like if my taste has changed. Currently my favorite from her is Beach Read and then Happy Place is like a very very close second but I am thoroughly enjoying and highly anticipating this one that I'm currently reading. It does come out at the end of the month. It is about this woman who got completely jilted. She was engaged and then her fiance decided he loved his childhood best friend. Meanwhile his childhood best friend also broke up with her fiance and they kind of just ran off into the sunset together and left our male and female leads to which I can't think of their name. Miles is the guy. What the heck is the girl's name? I am so bad at character names guys. You gotta just accept it for what it is if you watch my stuff. So our female lead and this guy Miles move in together and then they start this whole plot of like fake dating to seem like they're coping. And that is about where I'm at. Are we listening to that? And then I am reading this romanticy called Spark of the Everflame. This is available on Kindle Unlimited. I think like the whole series. There's three right now and the fourth one comes out in June. I did buy the physical copy because I've heard a couple of people that I really trust. Rachel over at Raven Haired Reader, she's like my go-to for specifically the fantasy romance. She raved about this one and then another friend of mine also was raving about it and telling me I have to try it. So I trusted them. I went ahead and bought the book even though I'm primarily reading it on my Kindle. When I read the synopsis on fantasy books, I don't know if it's something wrong with me or just like a part of my brain that's a little slow, <laughs> but I don't understand synopsis of fantasy books. I will look for certain buzzwords or I will read and be like, okay, that's definitely a hard pass. It has some like things I don't want to read in it. But most of the time for me when it comes to fantasy, I just kind of jump. I tend to be like 20% of the way into a book and then finally we'll go reread the synopsis because at that point it's like I understand it a little bit better. I'm like oh now I get it. About 20% of the way into the book is when I finally understand what I'm reading. I've learned with fantasy like you have to just ride the wave okay. You cannot go into it expecting to understand this world and these characters and the magic and all of the things immediately. You got to trust the process and just enjoy your reading. Currently I am I think like 40% into this book. I can't say that I love it yet. I'm still definitely like getting my feet wet in the story. Basically from what I understand we have a girl who is human but there's a lot of signs indicating she's not and their society is kind of overruled by what they call descended which are not human and they have different lands and territories that each kind of magic system owns and talk of a war going on. Our girl Diem is feeling a lot of things. There's a lot of like mystery going on. Her mom has gone missing. She is having a lot of weird things happening with her body and she is just now where I'm at going into work as a healer because that's her occupation for the Descended. 
and of course it's for like the royal family who she absolutely despises this prince. I'm extremely intrigued so we will see where this goes but before we go into my book room and start doing like all of the bookish things I have book mail that I've been waiting to open for this vlog. I have a pre-order for Sarah Adams new book. I love Sarah Adams so much. She is definitely a go-to author for me. Typically I do pre-order books from Amazon, I'm not gonna lie, but she did a campaign where you got a signed copy plus like a sticker and all these things from this bookshop. Okay, let me get this open. <laughs> The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This one just came out on April 2nd. Oh my gosh, there's things are just like falling out of it. Okay, we'll look at all of that in a minute. This one is going to be like super easy to breeze through. I'm so excited to read another Sarah Adams. It is a football romance. She ends up being like his agent, but she broke his heart in high school. And so they're kind of both trying to work together. But from what I understand, he's like holding a grudge and plans to make her life pretty miserable. Nora somehow schemes him. And after a night in Vegas, they end up waking up together married. So this should be a very entertaining read. If you don't know already, it is her first time including a open door scene, but apparently she puts at the beginning, yeah, if you prefer to keep the bedroom door fully closed, skip chapter 34. So I wish so much more authors would do that because it would make life so simple. And I just really, really love that she did that. The book is signed. And then I got the Los Angeles Sharks. This must be the football team. A cute little sticker. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. So it's a bookmark, but it's like a ticket to the game. That is so creative and cute. And then a keychain. This obviously has something to do with the story. It is their initials with a little ice cream. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. The other piece of mail that I have, if you watched my Magnolia Parks reading vlog, you saw me shopping for Magnolia Parks merch and I insisted a couple of times while shopping with you guys that I don't need any more sweaters in my life. Well, about two weeks later, I ordered a sweater. <laughs> I just saw this and I literally couldn't deny it. So now I have another sweater, but here is a life spoiler, guys. You are hearing it right here, right now, first. I didn't want to buy any more sweaters because I'm living in Florida and I don't need any more sweaters living in Florida, but I'm not really going to be living in Florida much longer. That's all you're getting right now. That is it. So more updates will be coming, but that gave me more of an incentive to go ahead and just buy the sweater. It's the perfect color. It is exactly the color I was hoping it would be. I can already tell I'm going to love this. Poppy Soul Co. So I will tag them below and link their Etsy store. It looks like they're also on Instagram. It is so perfect. Oh my gosh. I just hope I got the size right. I am in love. It is a little oversized, which is what I wanted, but it says romance book girly and it's got the little bow and it's the like what do they call it? Embroidered? I think that's what it's called. So I actually got the small and that was where I was like questioning if I should get a small because I wanted it oversized after I ordered it, but it is definitely oversized. Like this is a small and it's going to hang well below my waistline. The quality though is fantastic. I am stoked. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to have this just like cutesy pink romance girly sweatshirt. All right, let's head over to my library room and we're going to go redecorate my Kindle and I have a bunch of stickers and things that I ordered from Etsy to show you guys there. And we're going to post some books to Pango and put some books away and just to do the things. So let's go. It is officially April and I'm behind by a few books, so I need to do that. I also wanted to show you guys this adorable bookmark. I also 
ordered this on Etsy. I just love putting the books that I've read throughout the year on here. However, I definitely need to order another one because I'm already almost done and we're only in March. I do have two reading journals. This is one that I've created. It is nothing special. I do not go crazy. I don't have that kind of time. I just do very basic updates in this one. I have a monthly page where I track the books that I've read and my star rating for those. And then this is what I need to work on today. So I do a page like this at the end of the month where I wrap it up and I like to calculate like how many books I actually read, what my favorites were, and how many number of pages I read that month. Otherwise in here I just have a little shelf thing to add my favorite books of the year. And then this is like my reads by genre because I like a visual of what genre I'm reading the most of, which shocking, it's fantasy and romance. Oh, and I have this calendar page that I keep track of like releases coming out. Sorry, this isn't the most aesthetic little book run through. I did not intend to even do this right now. And then this one is an actual reading journal that you can get on Amazon. This is by a clockwork reader who is a YouTuber. I don't even follow her actually. Maybe I should, but you can get this one on Amazon. It just has like these type of pages. And so this is where I like to write like my more thorough reviews. Like some of them are really long. And quotes that I love. I'm a huge quote person. So I'm gonna do that. updated my kindle stickers in like a year in fact they're like all falling <laughs> i need to know if anyone has a solution for that because i think that when i'm reading at night and i like must pull just a tad on the clear case and my stickers all fall so i'm very excited to update this i ordered a bunch of really fun cute things on Etsy. This is from Endless TBR. She is on Instagram and Etsy. I will link her below. I'm so excited about what I ordered. Endless TBR. This is just her little thank you note and the goodies. Aw, she sent me a bookmark. That's so cute. I didn't order that, but I love it. I got these little backgrounds. I've got daisies in my book era and a bow naturally so these will now go like on top of the black background on my kindle which i didn't even know this was a thing i feel like i'm shook over this she had so many options it was very hard for me to choose um i will be buying more <laughs> and now the struggle of like which one do i want to use like right now and then the stickers i got an enemies to lovers book club <laughs> This one is literally me. Anti-social but willing to discuss books. Tell me that's not literally the cutest thing. Of course, a Kindle girly book club. And always in my sports romance era, she had a ton of stickers too. So these are just the ones that I picked for now. Let's take this off. I think the only stickers that I would like to keep that were already on my Kindle. I love this beautiful book stock. And then I have two from, of course, Magnolia Parks. I would like to keep them both on there, but we will see. If it comes down to choosing one, I'm going to keep my house with the Weather Parks. I can't remember the name of the shop that I got these in, but I will link it below. We'll see if I can fit those on there.
guys, I ended up like completely binging this book. It was so good. Like 60% in is when it finally picked up for me. I'm not gonna lie. Prior to that, I was just kind of like, this is every other fantasy book I've ever read where you have this female who is fierce and discovering herself and you have the swoon-worthy, handsome, powerful male and then the other guy who is like the best friend and boyfriend. And I just was really starting to wonder if I was gonna end up giving this one a bad review. I am landing at four stars for it though because things finally started moving and the last 20% like what? Okay, so this guy Luther has won my heart. I think that that's why this isn't five stars for me as well is because I really wanted more of him. It is so heavily about our female lead DM and this guy Luther who I really like he was barely in this book but the parts he was in so good. However, I will say, due to the fact that this is book one of four, Sarah J Mass has ruined males for me where in book one, if I really like a guy, I am so scared <laughs> that he's gonna turn into a jerk or die and he's just not going to be the end all be all guy. But that aside, I'm just gonna ride this wave I am so team Luther. I just really love when a male cares for a girl before she even knows it. When he is throwing the signs and he is like, I will protect you with my life. I will care for you. I notice the details about you. While meanwhile, the girl is still like off doing her thing and not even interested and doesn't even know anything. Like it's just over her head. And yet this male still is loving her. That is perfect writing to me. <laughs> then it ends on a total cliffhanger. Of course, naturally, you're just like, what the? heck. I am very eager and very hopeful for the second book. I highly recommend this book. It was a success. Getting two books. The first one is Done and Dusted. I've seen this everywhere. So many people reading it. It says a sweet slow burn sunshine in written form. It's a cowboy romance. Say less. You've already said enough. Slow burn, sunshine, cowboys. I'm really hoping that this isn't too smutty. I didn't look to see if it's like more on that open door smutty side. So hopefully it's not. But I'm very excited to try this one. There is a guy. He's like newer to booktube. I'm pretty sure he's quite new. His name is Bookish Daddy. I found him through someone else I follow. I just instantly followed him because he is a married dad that loves to read. I just instantly really liked him, not in a weird way. He reads a lot of fantasy and on his channel he was talking about Brandon Sanderson's 
Tress of the Emerald Sea and he mentioned that Brandon wrote this for his wife and he also said that it's one of his like favorite books ever now. Those two things just really drew me in and I am now here two days later buying this book and I really can't wait to read it. I have no clue what it's about. It says it's an original fairy tale that will delight fans of the Princess Bride and Stardust. It's probably like a really beautiful fantasy type of story. I don't know. I just was like, I need to get that book. We're off to dinner now at Bonefish. finished funny story I have thoughts <laughs> initial thoughts was I really really like Miles I thought that his character was so fun like he was the sarcastic but fun male which I really enjoy that type of a male I thought that the idea of the plot was really good you know with the kind of fake dating to make the exes jealous but the story just like took a lot of other turns. There ended up being a lot of plot in regards to family issues and family trauma that both Miles and Daphne, yeah, her name's Daphne. Both of them had like these very separate but traumatic type of upbringing and parents. I appreciate that in a story. I love when a story just really like resonates with you and you feel less alone. However, I just was kind of confused because I was like, wait, I thought this was about like this fake dating, making the exes jealous. I just felt like Daphne and Miles' love for each other for most of the book was very unbelievable to me, though I liked them as individuals and I was like, rooting for them. We already know how this was going to end. It was so lust driven and so physical and I don't enjoy that as much with a love story. This book was so much spicier than typical Emily Henry. I'm gonna sit on it for a little bit but I do think that right now I would say this is my least favorite Emily Henry which makes me so sad to say because I still enjoyed this story. Like reading her books is an enjoyable experience. I laugh a lot. I love her banter. I think that she does write characters very well but for one of the first times ever in the history of my reading I didn't really believe in the love and I guess I just don't like that when it's like all physically driven. So I don't know. That is just my thoughts. I do still recommend you try it if you like Emily Henry, if you like a rom-com with a splash <laughs> of drama. But at least Spark of the Everflame was amazing. So <laughs> this was overall a good reading week for me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and this vlog. I definitely want to do more videos like this because why not? Like all things bookish, sign me up always. If you liked this video and you have not subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button and sticking around. I hope that your books are amazing and I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.